Hi there, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Anjali and that is my dog Sadie and together we are roaming the UK in our 1992 camper van Jezebel. Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for tuning in. It's always lovely to see you here, my internet people. Uh, today we are off to Eme, uh, otherwise known as the Plague Village. Uh, it's a little village in the Peak District um, that I'm going to go visit today. Uh, I'm hoping I can get in to see the museum. Uh, they're not big fans of dogs, so um, we'll see if I can get into the museum as well. But we're going to go on a 5k walk that was in one of the books that I picked up from Bakewell a couple of weeks back. Um, it is walk number three uh, round Eme, the Plague Village. Uh, it's about 5k and it stops off at some of the interesting bits, some of the plague stones, and tells us a bit of history about the village. Um, so yeah, we're going to go there. It's going to be good fun. Okay, we've arrived. Yay! Uh, so the drive was really nice. Um, There's still a bit of flooding, obviously, from the storms that have happened in the uh, past couple of days and I saw lots of waterfalls that I think I would normally miss just because the rivers and things are just so overflowing the uh, the water was like flying down the hills it looked really cool uh, but also not I couldn't really stop on any of those roads to take a picture of it um, that is the uh, the pain of driving and being a solo traveler is is that you can't just always stop and take pictures and, and things if I had a passenger I could be like take a video but I don't have a passenger so and Sadie hasn't quite worked out how to use a camera yet um but yes I saw some lovely waterfalls um and I'm looking forward to driving back and seeing them as well if it's still quite light if there isn't a lot of traffic on the road then maybe I'll be able to stop at some of them on the way back and have a look at them um but yeah a lot of the road is still quite wet from uh, the rain and there was like a couple of um sort of vehicles out trying to fix the flooding of the rivers where they've overflowed but yes I've made it here to Eme um, I parked just below where I am now in a pay and display car park and a very nice man who works at the museum sort of came and said you do know that just behind you is a free parking uh, just up the hill so go up there so I came out of the parking up the road and now I'm in the free parking so it's free all day there's no overnight parking, no camping in your vehicles. There's a £50 fine if you are caught doing it, so don't do it. Let me tell you a little bit about this village before we start getting out and go for a wander. So it's called the Plague Village because in 1665, uh, a bundle of flea-infested cloth came to the village from London. It was delivered to the tailors here in the village and the tailor's assistant opened the package and subsequently died of the bubonic plague. Um, it soon started spreading around the village. Now, the village did something that at the time was unheard of, but for us, having just gone through lockdown, we will understand this completely. They decided to self-isolate as a village. And so people who had the plague or had been in contact with people with the plague stayed in their houses um, and the people around them helped them by bringing them food and things but the whole village went into quarantine so no one from the village left the village no one came into the village and there were uh, stone walls erected around the village to, sh to show the borders of it where no one could come in or out of um, and people from local parishes and other villages used to leave them food and gifts and prayers uh, in the stones in those walls that they could come and take so that they could get their food and everything whilst they were isolating now it didn't it, it didn't it stopped the, the spread so the the plague was it didn't spread over to to more parishes and, and sort of ravage this area of uh england during the time where it was doing so in other places um but there were quite a substantial loss of life here in the village and uh, one of the things that the vicar had everyone do, which was completely against the time, is to bury their dead in their gardens. So normally you want your dead buried in consecrated ground. You want them buried in the churchyard. But the vicar said, no, we can't just because we don't want to spread this plague anymore. Someone dies, they get buried in their houses or in their gardens, not, you know, just under the floorboards. <laughs> but they get buried in their gardens, not the church. Um, and we'll do this. The only person who is actually buried in 
the churchyard who died of the plague uh, is the vicar's wife um, and we'll go see her tomb on the uh, tour but everyone else was buried in their gardens um, when they died to help again to stop this uh, spread of the plague which was completely unheard of another thing they did was they had the vicar held um, open services out in the air at a place at a cave a double arch like a natural arch cave uh, just um sort of it's still, still within the village boundaries um but he held open services there and they called it a uh, cutlet church and uh that's where they held their services again open air to help stop the spread of the plague um which yeah in 1665 you know these these are the things that we were also doing during lockdown uh with the pandemic and they were doing that in this village to make sure that everyone else in the other parishes didn't get the plague as well uh, which is why it's such a famous village because no one else was doing that you know someone got the plague and met someone else and then traveled and it spread over the it spread over england um and it continued to come back and leave england and come back again because again people would then go travel when they pick it up in spain and bring it back from spain and and then they go you know off to scotland and then they take it off over to scotland and it would just ravage and it was uncontained for years and years and years because people were not doing this self-isolation thing and so this really truly put that on the map the idea that by containing it you can um get over it um which I thought was really is really interesting, and um, so I'm looking forward to having a wander around and actually uh, finding some of the graveyards, seeing some of the houses, and actually learning a little bit more about uh, this kind of cool village in the middle of the Peak District. So I hope that you enjoy this video. Uh, if you do, remember to like and comment and subscribe, uh, as always. And uh, yeah, let's go and do some investigating of the village. Our first stop on the walk was to the grave of Humphrey Merrill, the village herbalist who died in September 1666. His grave is in a field just behind his house. Uh, like many of the people who died from the plague, uh, he wasn't buried in a cemetery at the church, but in his garden. I am loving the colours uh, at the moment. Autumn, it's such a beautiful time of year, but it's not, you know, horribly raining. But yeah, all these golden colours, absolutely gorgeous. So the local people are helping the landowner um, to look after this site um, along with a partnership with Natural England and the Peak District National Park there is a wildlife project called the Vision for Wildlife um, which helps to conserve this whole area and uh, keep it looking lovely and keeping animals safe here. This wall here is the original wall that runs round the village um, and it was built uh, when the plague came out in order to set the boundaries of the village uh, for the other parishes and for travellers so that they knew not to enter this area of quarantine. So people would come and they would put prayers and offerings and food in the holes within the walls um, to allow the people quarantining to still be able to eat and to give them hope.
we're just walking along uh, a bit of main paved road now which is nice because that last bit was very wet and boggy and muddy and my boots are very muddy now um so just up that way is another public footpath and you can see that sort of chimney just up there that's the lady wash mine um just up there um it involved me having to climb over some walls so i decided not to mainly because sadie is so muddy i don't want to pick her up uh, but yes that is the lady wash mine up there and the chimney stack just within those trees there so this well is named after reverend william monpeston uh, who was one of the villagers and also the uh, priest at the church uh, during the quarantine time of the village um, this used to be used as a dropping point for food from neighboring villagers Residents of Eam left coins as payment in the water, believing they would be purified. Even today, people use it um, as a wishing well. This bit, apart from the electricity pylons that are just uh, going overhead, feels like like I'm in like Jurassic Park or something. Just these massive, massive trees and all these big overgrown ferns. It's very cool. It's just trees for days. So you walk through this like another world forest and then you come out and you're back in the village here so walking along just past some really beautiful sandstone houses and bungalows just gorgeous i need to get rich so i can live in the peak districts because it's just lovely here I mean, failing that, I need to get rich enough to buy a bigger van that I can convert and then live in the Peak District, you know, stealthily. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite beautiful here. One thing you notice as you walk around the village are these plaques on houses, cottages and inns that tell you a bit more about the families who lived there and were quarantined in there and uh, died during the plague. Of all the known victims, only Montpesson's wife, Catherine, was buried in the churchyard close to the Anglo-Saxon cross. Visitors to the churchyard also seek out the gravestone of Harry Bagshaw, a cricketer for Derbyshire. Um, with its shattered wicket and raised umpire's finger signaling his final dismissal. I didn't find it, but also I wasn't looking for it. So if you go there and find it, let me know. But I didn't look for it. It's also said that the graveyard is haunted and the ghost um, of Catherine haunts the graveyard and is often seen standing next to the Celtic cross uh, that is very much near her grave. Oh, it's starting to get cold when that sun goes in. <laughs> Sky is still very blue, but it's uh, it's much colder now than it was when we set off. My face is cold. <laughs> my poor nose. Uh, we're still doing the route set out in my book. Uh, we're now heading towards uh, what the second church. Uh, what's it called? Cuckwood Church. So yes, we'll be there in a minute. It is here in this cave that the Reverend would do his services on a Sunday for the villagers during the quarantine which, to allow them to have enough space between them that they wouldn't be infecting each other but they could still hear the word of the Lord. There's a really cool looking cave behind me uh, but the rocks 
below my feet are so slippery I nearly just slipped and just rolled down the whole thing so I've decided not to go explore that today maybe come back when it's not been raining a lot and uh, yeah it's too, it's too steep and the stones are too slippery uh, for me to not break an ankle or a wrist or something so we're, we're not going to go explore but it looks kind of fun at the end of my walk it just started to rain uh, so I was quite lucky in that sense as I got down to the village centre there was a rainbow waiting for me just above the pub where I plan to go and have my lunch it's like fate well we're back at the van we have finished our walk just in time because it's absolutely started to tip it down now uh, how very rude uh, <laughs> but we are back in the van so doesn't matter um yeah i stopped off for a late lunch at the miners arms which is a uh, pub uh, with a bar restaurant area in it the area itself has always been a bar uh, well, always been a tavern and inn and it does have some rooms to stay in and it's been there since 1660 um the food was excellent so i just i had a tuna melt uh, like ciabatta and it was very filling i asked for some side a side of chips as well which i probably shouldn't have because there was far too many chips uh, they were also very accommodating because i asked for a chicken breast just plain grilled chicken breast no seasonings or anything on it for sadie um because we're going to be back a bit late so i thought i'd give her some dinner now she's had a long walk and she's been a very good girl um and they were so accommodating they gave me two chicken breasts so i've got one in my bag which will be for her dinner later as well uh, or breakfast tomorrow um but yeah they were really kind and uh yeah just really accommodating and that was really nice <laughs> uh, so highly recommend the miners arms if you are are in eam uh, go to the miners arms for something to eat either at lunchtime or for dinner um, because the food was reasonably priced big portions delicious so highly recommended so the walk from the book has taken us all around the village and also the surrounding area as well which was very nice so I might not have followed any routes if I didn't have a book with me I might not have gone up into the hills and and sort of gone round everything so it was really nice to actually go and get sort of lost in nature as well as like in the little village as well um, do recommend coming to Eam if you are interested in history uh, because you know they do they they do lean into the fact that they are plague village and there are lots of historical maps up everywhere and they, there's a lot of information to tell you about things that have happened in the village during that time uh so yeah i definitely would recommend coming to Eam for the day and if you're going to be like visiting the peak district they've got a youth hostel around here uh, they've got the bars and like the pub that I was just in the miners arms has uh beds for you as well so you know definitely worth looking into if you're staying in the Peak District maybe come and stay here it's very quiet very uh nice looking village um I have been told that the mi the miners arms does get busy on a Friday after work when everyone finishes uh, so it can get a bit loud and a bit rowdy on a Friday but during the week it's quite quiet when I was there it was very quiet having my lunch um yeah it's been a really good interesting day lots of nature walks and some history so pretty pleased about that as always if you have enjoyed this video please do like comment subscribe um i really do appreciate uh, every subscription i get for this channel uh it yeah, makes it all uh, worth it all the learning to edit videos and uh, all of that stuff so if you did enjoy this please please do subscribe um it's free costs you nothing to do um and it just makes me smile whenever i get a new subscriber so if you want to make me smile please subscribe uh yeah i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you've enjoyed some of the newer shots that i've been able to do thanks to my new uh hover drone uh I'm really excited to get to use that properly it was a little bit difficult because because it's very lightweight it, like the wind was battering it and so there was there was some bits where the, the videos I had a look are not going to be usable um, 
or the fact that it couldn't get high up in the air enough because of the wind um, but I'm going to be doing a full review of the drone at a later date there's a tractor going behind me there <laughs> um, but yes I hope you've enjoyed everything like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video uh, where I will be uh, going on a orienteering navigation skills walk in Grantham uh, with the Say Yes More tribe so yeah if anyone uh, has watched my other videos you know that I'm very good at getting lost so I thought I'd sign up for a navigation thing to learn how to navigate properly and make sure I don't get lost anymore so I'll see you in the next video bye